supporting um, the Magnazone potentially going for some funders. You've got uh, it's supporting uh, Rillaboom from taking da too much damage from uh, fire moves and Togekiss, of course, doing what Togekiss does. Um, so something that is going to have to be navigated um, on uh, Alexander's side of the field. You always have to be wary of that Colossal as well, uh, coming out with mm. that Dragapult. does have access to the Politoed, which is really going to put a stop to the, the, the Colossal as well. Uh, so both players have to be wary of that, but you're going to be seeing the Dragapult and the Togekiss coming out from Miguel's side of the field. Uh, very, very classic lead coming out from his side. And so we're also going to be seeing that Dragapult and Colossal coming out for Alexander's side. Yeah, so you were saying about being wary of Colossal and uh, definitely something that Miguel's going to have to start thinking about uh, straight off the bat. You can see it there uh, next to Dragapult, which is known to have uh, Surf and uh, potentially some other shenanigans going on to support Colossal. Um, not really too much of a threat to Colossal from Miguel now, so Politoed coming in in favour of the Togekiss, trying to get some real water type uh, damage on the field here. It's also going to be increasing the damage output from the Surf onto the Colossal, if that's what the, the Dragapult on Alexander's side goes for. Uh, but we are going to be seeing a Dynamax on this first turn, and it's going to be that Dragapult coming out from Miguel's side of the field. Uh, so may, we're going to have to see if it's going to have access to one of those cheeky water moves as well to be able to threaten down the Dragapult, especially in this rain as well that the Politoed has just switched in, because there wasn't really mm. too much stopping the Dragapult on Alexander's side going for that Surf on, on the Colossal on the first turn. And we are going to be seeing that Dynamax, all the Gigantamax coming out from the, the Colossal uh, on, on Alexander's side of the field. So almost certainly going to be going for that Surf as well. But a very nice switch in for the Polito, just increasing that damage output that would come out onto the Colossal uh, from that Surf as well. And we're going to have to see if that's the option of choice going for the Dragapult. But the Dragapult on Miguel's side of the field is going to be moving first, firing off a Max Phantasm into that Colossal, doing about a third of the damage to the Colossal as well, uh, dropping the defenses and revealing the Life Orb on the Dragapult, but the Dragapult on Alexander's side does go for that Surf, and you can see how much damage that does to the Colossal with that Rain Boost as well, but the Colossal is able to survive, activate its Steam Engine, and also get that Weakness Policy activated, so we'll be able to fire off a big Max Volcolith uh, on this turn, uh, which is going to be uh, almost certainly going into that Togekiss to be able to take it out, but no, it's actually going into the Dragapult able to do a huge amount of damage thanks to that weakness policy boost going to be very close if it's going to be in range of that Volcolith as well but it's not quite going to be and it's going to be doing a nice bit of chip to the Politoed as well brilliant turn there and, and yeah it just shows how much the passive effects of the game really make a difference with the amount of damage that uh, Dragapult on Alexander's side of the field did to that Colossal uh, Volcolith targeting though really really good for uh, Alexander making sure he's doing as much damage to that uh, Dy Dynamax Pokemon on uh, Miguel's side of the field. The question is, is, does Colossal have access to Max Guard? Maybe he can just wait a turn, let Volcolith do its thing. Uh, Politoed, though, doesn't want to uh, take any more damage this turn, going straight for a Protect as a Max Overgrowth comes out from this Gigantamax uh, Colossal. So it would have done a huge amount of damage to that Politoed. Would have been able to pick up the knockout if the Politoed didn't protect itself, uh, but able to survive that thanks to the Protect as the grassy terrain is set up on the field. So going to be getting a little bit of recovery on the field. But speaking of recovery, it looks like that Politoed is holding that Citrus Berry. So going to be able to heal up a little bit more. And this time the Dragapult Ooh. on Alexander's side is going to be moving first and be able to take out that Dragapult with a Dragon Dart. So it looks like the Dragapults are going to be the same speed here and a very crucial speed tie win for the Dragapult on Alexander's side. Yeah, a real risky play there for uh, Alexander. Uh, maybe just saying, you know what, I'll take I'll knock out the Politoed, make sure that goes down. If I win the speed tie, I win the speed tie, that's that's great. Uh, if Miguel wins the speed tie, maybe I lose my Colossal, maybe I lose my Dragapult, but I've still managed to knock out the Politoed and get some really good damage on the field. Uh, Rillaboom coming in for Miguel now, going to be able to threaten the Colossal uh, that has had its defense reduced by Max Phantasm in the first turn. Uh, so definitely going to be uh, negatively affected by something like a Grassy Glide. Um, but equally, uh, does have to be concerned about what is going to happen to that Dragapult on Alexander's side of the field. You know, it hasn't taken any damage yet. 
uh, Colossal has done uh, basically knocked out a Pokemon um, and done quite a lot of damage to Ponytoad. So, you know, is um, where's Miguel going in terms of being able to knock out this Dragapult and and make sure he gets back onto the front foot? Oh, we're seeing an ally switch come out from the Dragapult and able to, to redirect the, the Grassy Glide into the Dragapult instead. So the Colossal is able to survive this turn and fire off another Max Volcolith going into that Rillaboom, doing a huge amount of damage. I'll be very close if it's going to be in range of that Volcolith, <laughs> but the Scold is going to follow up into the Colossal, uh, is able to pick up the knockout, but a very, very crucial ally switch coming out from the Dragapult, allowing that Colossal to get a huge amount of damage on the Rillaboom. Yeah, definitely some shenanigans happening there and not a move that you always see on Dragapult for sure. Uh, Volcolith uh, effect coming out and uh, does knock out that Rillaboom. So great turn there for Alexander and uh, a bit unfortunate for Miguel, but that Scald going into the correct slot uh, as it turned out um, in this turn. So, uh, you know, Miguel not getting the worst end of the stick just in case. Uh, there was something like a double target going on and Ally Switch was able to make Colossal dodge out of the way of both attacks instead of just one. Yeah, well, Gengar is going to be the Pokemon of choice coming in for Alexander's side. A really good Pokemon to bring in when uh, Miguel is just bringing in his Togekiss as well. Uh, so going to be able to threaten some very, very good damage on the Togekiss as well. And be able to resist the, the dozen gleams that could come out from the the Togekiss as well, that would be able to take out the Dragapult, but Dragapult is going to be firing off the Dragon Dart. Thanks to Togekiss being a fairy type, both of these darts are going to hit into the Politoed and is just going to be enough to Ooh. pick up the knockout. Uh, so now the Gengar will be able to follow up with a poison type move onto the Togekiss, but instead is going to be going for a Perish Song here. Uh, so the Togekiss is now going to be put on a timer and will have to win the game in three turns for Miguel's side of the field. But it's going to be firing off an Air Slash into that Gengar. Not a dozen wings to be able to take out the Dragapult. So now uh, it's, it's, it's got three Pokemon to, the, uh, to Miguel's one. Still going around a chip from the Volcolith as well. But now the Tokus needs to win in three turns, and I'm not sure if it's going to be able to do that. I think it's very unlikely that uh, the Togekiss will be able to. Uh, you saw the damage from Air Slash there. Um, needs to, the Togekiss would need to make sure that the Air Slash definitely landed on the Gengar. Uh, if the Gengar is able to protect, which it is just been able to go for, um, you know, you, you get to a situation where does Miguel call the right move? Does he dazzling gleam here? Um, and it may be that even as the Surf goes into the Togekiss here, that uh, Alexander has enough in the tank to just knock out the Togekiss even before the Perish Song finishes. Now we're down to two turns of, of Perish Song, so Alexander, if he wanted to, he could just switch out that Gengar, reset that Protect, and even if the Tokus was able to take out both Pokemon on Alexander's side of the field, the Gengar would be able to come back in and go for that Protect as well. Uh, Dragapults on Colossal teams usually don't carry the Protect, so it would need to be the Gengar that switches out to go for that Protect. Or maybe he's just comfortable with his Pokemon in the back that would be able to survive the Tokus, and even then, the Tokus can't take out both the Gengar and the, the Dragapult in the same move if it had uh, Air Slash and Dazzling Gleam. We're going to see be seeing an ally switch come out once again uh, from the Dragapult as well, as the Gengar tried and failed to double protect here, but Air Slash is going to be hitting into the Dragapult, and now we're down to the final turn of Perish Song, and there isn't anything that Tokus can really do here. No, nothing at all. Uh, there's still a Pokemon in the back for Alexander, and regardless of whether both of these Pokemon on Alexander's side of the field are knocked out this turn, uh, the Perish will take its uh, take its effect and knock out the Togekiss before Miguel is even able to look at the last Pokemon in the back. So, uh, yeah, really, really like this from Miguel, making sure he's, you know, carrying on to the end of the Perish Song, uh, seeing if he can get a knockout before Perish Song ends, so he can see what the fourth Pokemon is uh, that Alexander has brought to the game. Uh, not able to do that, unfortunately, in this game, even though the Air Slash is going to be able to go into the Dragapult and knock it out. Uh, unfortunately, at the end of this turn, the Perish Song is going to uh, take its effect, and with Perish Count going to zero, we're going to end the game 1-0 with a clean field.
Yeah, quite nicely played in that end game of the Parish Song, not to reveal the final Pokemon for Alexander's side. He did have the option to go on the offensive if the Gengar, Gengar was carrying a Sludge Bomb to just take out, take the knockout on the Tokus. Mm. Uh, but going for mm. that guaranteed win, when you've clicked that Parish Song, if you've got that guaranteed win, you might as well take it. But then even still being able to maneuver himself so he didn't need to reveal his final Pokemon. Yeah, definitely. So going into game two, uh, really the question is, how do we deal with that Colossal better? Well, he did switch in the Polito to get the rain going, uh, which did a, do a huge amount of damage to the, the Colossal, bringing it very low. But then if the Polito would have just been led instead, then it could have just gone for the Scold immediately. But then it would have still been threatened by that max overgrowth uh, after the Surf would have activated the weakness policy. Mm. Uh, mm. So it's still a little bit awkward. Maybe the Politoed would be a Pokemon that you would want to consider Dynamaxing that would be able to survive any move that a plus two Colossal would be able to throw at it and be able to respond with a KO with a Max Geyser as well. But now you've seen the ally switches on the Dragapult, you always have to be wary of that as well. You definitely do, and ally switch is something that you've always got to be looking out for when you're playing against uh, a team, especially, you know, once it's revealed, the mind games start, and uh, whether or not the ally switch is clicked for the rest of the set. Uh, the other the other thing I was thinking about, Jamie, uh, although it's a, a quite an inconsistent way of being able to um, play against Dragapult Colossal, uh, we didn't see a Focus Sash at all um, revealed from Alexander's side of the field. So, you know, maybe Max Phantasm could go into uh, the Dragapult on uh, Alexander's side of the field rather than um, going into the Colossal uh, on Alexander's side of the field. So maybe Miguel could say, you know what, I'm going to take the chance, I'm going to try and knock out the Dragapult before it activates the Colossal. Uh, then you don't have to worry about it at all, right? But then that would still be risking a speed tie, and if, if you do lose that speed tie, then the Colossal hasn't taken any damage and would just be act uh, activated its weakness policy and got the steam engine going as well. So it is going to be quite awkward. Uh, whether whether mm. Alexander still sticks with that same strategy, uh, whether the Politoads is going to be led this time to try and counteract that Colossal as well. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if there's going to be any adaptations coming up from both both players here. There almost certainly has to be one for Miguel's side of the field. Dragapult Sokohis is not the play against the Dragapults and the, the Colossal as well. But instead, he thinks that the play is the Magnum Zone paired with the Dragapult as well, into once again the Dragapult and Colossal from Alexander's side. Yeah, interesting lead there for Miguel. I'm not quite sure what the Magnum Zone is really wanting to be doing. Uh, none of Magnum Zone's natural um attacks really do too much damage to uh colossal uh well at least they're only they only hit colossal for neutral damage uh, other than body press but body press really does need some uh moves going to get it started so maybe a little opportunity for the polito to come in uh, maybe defend the um magnazone from uh, any fire moves with that rain and i think that's exactly what we're seeing with the polito entering the field this turn and seeing another turn one switch in for the Polito, getting that rain going, going to be increasing the damage output of the Surf onto the Colossal as well. And also, like you said, going to be reducing any fire moves coming out from the Colossal into this Magna Zone, which is actually going for a Dynamax on Miguel's side of the field. Uh, so a very interesting choice to Dynamax the Magna Zone here. Going to be able to shrug off those, those fire moves from the Colossal even better now in the rain and in its Dynamax form as the Colossal is once again going to be going for that turn one Gigantamax. So we're probably going to be seeing another Surf come out from the Dragapod to get that Steam Engine going. But then the Magna Zone will be protected very well from any Max Flares coming up from the Colossal. Uh, but the Polito will still be completely open to another Max Volcolith if that's the targeting that the Colossal wanted to go for here. And we should be seeing a Surf come out from the Dragapult, but again, with that Rain Boost, doing almost half damage to the Colossal, but still going to be activating that Steam Engine once again, uh, putting the Colossal as the fastest Pokemon on the field, and going to be doing some very good damage with that Weakness Policy again. And are we going to see a Volcolith or a Flare come out from the Colossal? It's going to be a Max Flare going into that Magna Zone and still doing a huge amount of damage, even with that Dynamax and the Rain as well. Still going to be doing a lot of damage and also overwriting the Rain with the Sun instead, but also yeah. activating a Weakness Policy on the Magna Zone as well. So now going to be able to fire off some very good damage. It's going to be a Max Steel Spike into that Colossal and with that weakness policy boost is able to take the knockout on the Colossal. So uh, that's that's an unconventional way of taking out a Colossal with a Magnus Zone, but it ends up working out very well for Miguel. 
Yeah, very, very well. And the Polito doing exactly what it did in the last game is making sure that Colossal did uh, more residual, uh, the Dragapult did more damage to the Colossal um, and protects the Magnezone so that it is able to activate that weakness policy um, and really reply back with uh, what became, in effect, a super effective move back. Uh, so yeah, really, really like that change up. Um, and really great play there from Miguel, uh, doing something a little bit unconventional, as you said, Jamie, um, but with absolutely fantastic effect. Uh, but at what cost? You know, we've got the sun now up, the Politoed doesn't like that, um, and the Magnazone has taken a lot of damage for its troubles. Polypto is going to be taking a little bit more damage from that Dragon Lance and really not too damage at all going into the Magna Zone. And Gengar is going to be following up with a Shadow Ball and it looks like it is able to pick up that last bit, a little bit of HP on the Magna Zone. Uh, so both players Dynamax being KO'd uh, after just one attack from each of the players. And Polito is going to be firing off a Scold into the Gengar but it is in the Sun now instead and not doing too much damage to the Gengar. Yeah, contrary to... Uh... Maybe what you'd expect, Skull doesn't have a higher burn chance in the sun, uh, even though the water might be just that little bit hotter. Um, so uh, Gengar avoiding that status condition as Dragapult comes in for Miguel's side of the field. And uh, we're going to be playing off some speed ties, but, you know, uh, it does look like the Dragapult on Miguel's side of the field is in a slightly nicer position, certainly a more pressuring position, uh, being able to do damage to both uh, Dragapult and... Um, Gengar on Alexander's side of the field so you know does Gengar feel threatened at all uh, do we see an ally switch uh, maybe trying to get a super effective ghost move going into the wrong slot uh, it seems like Polito wants to reset that rain uh, switching out in favor of the Rillaboom here going to be setting up that grassy terrain as well and we'll have to see which of the Dragapults is going to be moving first here the Gengar is going to be protecting itself from any moves and the Dragapult on Alexander's side is going to be moving first here firing off a Dragon Darts doing a huge amount of damage to that Dragapult and a nice bit of damage to the Rillaboom as well. But now the Dragapult on Miguel's side gets to fire off a Phantom Force, so we'll be able to avoid any attacks uh, from the from the Dragapult on uh, Alexander's side of the field if it wins that speed tie once again. But now the Phantom Force is going to pick up a knockout on either Pokemon it hits. It is a, one of the fun things about Phantom Force. You know an attack's coming, uh, you don't quite know where it's coming to. Um, so, you know, the fact that it goes through Protect uh, really does change uh, the way that it, uh, the way that you react to it, and the way that Alexander's reacting is to bring his Bronzong back in in favour of the uh, Gengar and get that reflect on the field. Able yeah, to get that reflect before the Dragapult it fires off the Phantom Force, so winning, winning another speed tie here, and that reflect allowed the the Bronzong to be able to survive that Phantom Force. But now the Rillaboom was able to fire off a knockoff into the Dragapult, and it does reveal the Focus Sash on the Dragapult here. Uh, so it, it won't be able to be able to, to, to be taken out by the Dragapult on Miguel's side in one turn. But now that Focus Sash has been broken once again. It has, and uh, you know, between all of the grassy terrain uh, recovery going on here and a, a, le a leftovers activation coming from the Bronzong, um, you know, Rillaboom's actually in a quite a nice position, uh, having that knockoff, likely to be able to knock out the uh, Bronzong on uh, Alexander's side of the field, would be able to knock out the Gengar if it was on the field or switched in. Um, but Gengar is in the back at the moment, and uh, that's where Rillaboom wants it to be. Uh, for the Dragapult on Miguel's side of the field is going to be protecting itself from this Dragon Darts, but that means Rillaboom will be taking both of the Darts here, doing a very good amount of damage to the Rillaboom, which is going to respond with another knockoff, which is not Ooh. able to pick up the KO on the Dragapult because its Focus Sash has been removed. And the Bronzong is going to be setting up an Iron Defense here, so going to be increasing its defense. And with that Reflect as well, it's going to be very, very tanky. Very, very tanky indeed, and definitely not going to be taking too much damage from Rillaboom or Dragapult on Miguel's side of the field. Um, you know, the, where we sit at the moment, we are now getting closer and closer to uh, Dragapult's 
tying off against each other and seeing which one goes first. Uh, you can see the way that Miguel was behaving, wanting to preserve Dragapult on his side of the field, not wanting to risk it, thinking, hey, this knockoff is going to do enough damage to knock out Dragapult on my opponent's side of the field. I don't think it has Protect, so let's go into that um, and see if we can take a, a cheeky little knockout there, make sure that Dragapult on my side of the field isn't affected. And of course, would have led to a situation where you can Phantom Force against the Gengar without any risk at all, and maybe preserve that Rillaboom in the meantime. Um, unfortunately, not quite the case, and now Bronzong is starting to become a little bit more of a threat. Yes, the Dragapult was in range of that Grassy Glide from the Rillaboom. And Dragapult is going for another Phantom Force here, but this would let the Bronzong set up another Iron Defense if it wants to go for that. But instead, going on the offensive with that Body Press and with the increased stages of defense, Ooh. is still not able to pick up the knockout on that Rillaboom. Uh, so maybe a little bit of a missed opportunity. Needed that extra Iron Defense to be able to survive this Phantom Force that will be almost certainly hitting it into, into it this next turn. And even if it's not, the Gengar is going to be coming in on the other slot, so it would also be threatened by that Phantom Force. Would certainly, and it really is going to be interesting to see what the targeting was here, because, uh, you know, that Dragapult could appear in either slot. Uh, and if uh, Miguel has targeted the Bronzong, not going to do so much damage, but if Miguel has correctly targeted the slot where Dragapult used to be, uh, then this Gengar is going to get knocked straight out. And it is indeed going to be knocked straight out by that Phantom Force. Uh, so now this Bronzong is going to have to take out three Pokemon on Miguel's side of the field. Uh, the Dragapult is going to be slowly carrying itself to that Life Orb Recoil, but the Rillaboom is going to be removing the leftovers from that Bronzong and put it just under a quarter of, of HP as the Bronzong is going to be following up with a Body Press. This time is able to pick up the knockout on the Rillaboom, but now it's lost that passive recovery in the leftovers as well. And Dragapult will just be able to fire off another another Phantom Force into the Bronzong and the Polito will be able to hit it on a special side where it hasn't got any boosts. Yeah, and especially with the rain being able to be uh, coming back in, uh, Politoed doing its little rain dance as it comes into the field um, and setting up that rain with its drizzle ability. Going to be boosting the power of all of the Skulls. We could even see some uh, secondary effects coming in from that. But, you know, it, it doesn't look too good for uh, Alex's side of the field at the moment. Yeah, the, the body press won't be able to affect the Dragapult as well, and it would have to rely on something like a Gyro Ball that would still be able to pick up the knockout on the Dragapult probably at this stage, since Dragapult is so fast. But yeah, the, the Bronzong almost certainly going to be in range of a, a Skull coming out from the Politoed as well. Even if the Dragapult just went for that Phantom Force, uh, the Politoed mm. should be able to pick up the knockout on that Bronzong. So. It was a very, very interesting way of dealing with the Colossal this time uh, for, uh, on Alexander's side by Miguel. Uh, Magnazone wouldn't have been the Pokemon you would have expected to be able to take out the Colossal, uh, but it was in combination with that Rain Boost as well. Uh, may have, that may have just tipped the Colossal over the edge of being able to be KO'd by that Max Steel Spike. Yeah, potentially, and I think, um, you know, really this was a game where the Colossal didn't quite manage to do as much as it did in the last game. If you look back at game one um, and how the game played out, it really was the, the Colossal that was able to uh, make a big enough hole in Miguel's team to have that Perish Song end game. This time that didn't quite happen with the uh, Magnazone uh, doing what it did and was able to stop that Colossal really going going off on one, really. Um, of course, you also didn't have the G-Max Volcalith coming out this game, and all of that passive damage really does add up, um, especially where you're going through those first three or four turns uh, where you're trying to out-damage your opponent, um, especially playing teams like this. And so not having that Volcalith as an op op option and uh, all of that passive damage racking up really did hurt Alexander's position. If he'd have gone for the Volcalith into the Politoed on the first turn, he wouldn't have activated the weakness policy as well on the Magnazone, and that would have mm. almost certainly allowed it to survive, so and that may be something to consider for Alexander going into this Game 3. If Miguel opts for the same strategy and he also goes for that Dragapult and Colossal mode, yeah, something something I'd be quite interested to see is whether the Magna, uh, whether the Mamoswine could make a little appearance on um, Alexander's side of the field. Uh, you know, if you look at Magnazone as, as a major threat, uh, which it certainly is to the Magnazone, um, then maybe you know you could you could play a game where 
you knock out the Magnazone and then uh, have a little bit of fun playing with the Colossal towards the end of the game rather than towards the start. Um, slightly unconventional way of playing, but could be something that would be quite interesting to watch. Well, the Colossal mode doesn't have to be uh, used on the first turn every single time. Uh, it can be saved in the back and can be very effective uh, if Alexander does choose to go for that. Uh, Mamoswine would definitely match up very well against both the Dragapult and the Magnazone if that's what Miguel wants to lead again. But then he does have that Politoed and the Rillaboom as well, which would heavily threaten that Mamoswine. So uh, it's going to be some interesting choices here to see if that Mamoswine is going to be coming along. I would definitely like to see it as it's a Pokemon you don't really see too often and would definitely pair well against the lead that Miguel went for. And it looks like he is going to be going with that Magnazone once again, but immediately leading with the Politoed into that Dragapult Colossal. Really, really like this adaptation. Miguel saying, do you know what? This is the situation I need to be in turn one to make sure I can knock out that Colossal as early as possible. Now, Miguel does risk the Politoed going down um, potentially earlier than he would like. Um, but the Politoed didn't really, hasn't really done a great deal of uh, work over this set. Um, mostly been there to do what it's just done, which is activate the rain. Um, so, you know, it could be that the Politoed is just there at the start. Maybe it gets risked. Maybe it even goes for a, a Dynamax. I think you mentioned that earlier in the set, Jamie. Um, but if this Colossal can be knocked out sooner rather than later, um, and then Politoed is knocked out for its troubles, that may be okay. Polito won't be knocked out this turn. Instead, it's going to be switching into that Rillaboom, uh, setting up the grassy terrain. So if an overgrowth was fired off into that Polito, it would still be doing increased amounts of damage thanks to that grassy terrain. And it looks like the Magnazone will be Dynamaxing once again for Miguel's side of the field. And it is still protected by that rain. We saw how much a Max Flare at plus two did to that Magnazone. It would be able to survive that attack once again and fire off another Max move. But Alexander does need to be wary of activating that weakness policy. He could be mm. targeting into the Politoed instead to avoid activating the weakness policy on the Magnazone. But it looks like he's going with that Colossal immediately again. Uh, still nothing, not really anything stopping him from going for that Surf once again. Uh, we are still in the rain, so it is still going to do very good damage to that Colossal. But if he ends up targeting the Politoed instead, the weakness policy won't be activated on the Magnazone. And then we'll have to see how much damage is going to be coming out from the, the Magnazone into the Colossal. But we are going to be seeing that turn one surf once again, activating the steam engine on that Colossal and getting the weakness policy activated as well. So we're going to have to see the targeting here, whether he's going to be going for that Max Flare to overwrite the, the brain here but whether that's going into the Magna Zone as well to activate the weakness policy, or if he's targeting Ooh. what was the Polytoad with that overgrowth. And it looks like that's the option he has chosen. He's gone for the overgrowth into the Rillaboom, still taking a lot of damage off of that serve and the overgrowth as well. But Steel Spike is being fired off into the Colossal. It's not got a weakness policy activated, but still does a very, very good amount of damage to the Colossal, bringing it dangerously low, definitely in range of a Grassy Glide, but we have mm. seen that that Dragapult is carrying Ally Switch. Alloy Switch is going to be the name of the game coming into the next turn. I think really it's going to be coming down to clever targeting. You know, you can, I, I would say in this situation that it would be a great idea to target the Dragapult with a Grassy Glide um, and go for a Flash Can, uh, a Max Steel Spike, should I say, into the uh, Colossal slot. Um, well, it looks like I would have been right in this turn. Let's see if Miguel would have <laughs> been um, as we see the Alloy Switch coming out. And he has called it correctly. He has grossly glided the Colossal even after the ally switch. So great, great turn coming up for the Rillaboom here. Uh, the Magnazone is no longer threatened by those Max Flares and is able to just fire off a Max Steel Spike into that Dragapult, bringing it down to its Focus Sash and going to be in range of that Grassy Glide again. So Miguel got the better end of this ally switch mind game here. Yeah, indeed. And, and you know, the toss up is whether ally switch happens or not, but when you target that way around, uh, you either break the sash and make sure the uh, good attack goes towards um, the uh, Colossal, or you take it down to its sash rather than just breaking the sash uh, with the Max Steel Spike, and as we saw there, just knock out the uh, Colossal before it even moves. 
That's really taken the main way of dealing with the Magna Zone away from Alexander's side. So the, the Max Flare we saw did a huge amount of damage even in the rain, but now that option's gone. The Magna Zone's only taken Surf Chip as well, so uh, the Magna Zone is looking in a very, very threatening position. The Gengar coming in for Alexander's side is going to be going to threaten with Shadow Balls, but that's still not going to be able to do too much damage, and the Dragapult is pinned by this Grassy Glide here. It is, and, uh, you know, hey, maybe we can see some ally switches to get around that, and certainly uh, now's the time to try and waste as much of the uh, potential from Magna Zone as possible. Um, and the only way to do that is to make sure it missed targets. Uh, of course, the more times you use ally switch, the less likely your opponent is to predict that you're going to use ally switch yet again. Uh, so let's see if that's the case here. Well, we've seen the ally switch and the grassy glide is going into what was the Dragapult. So Gengar is able to take that grassy glide and respond back with a sludge bomb, which is going to be picking up the knockout on this Rillaboom. But now the Magna Zone wasn't targeted this turn, it's going to be able to fire off another Max Steel Spike and either Pokemon would be KO'd to this. And it ends up being the Dragapult that is going to drop to this Max Steel Spike. Uh, so the Magna Zone is, is used up all its turn of Dynamax, but has been very effective for Miguel here. Very, very effective, taking two knockouts. Um, oh no, that's the, that's the first knockout, isn't it? Um, and the Colossal got way... KO'd by the, the Grassy Glide on the, on the turn before as well. Yeah, that's it. So the last Pokemon coming in here for Alexander, um, and the question is, is, is it going to be any more help with dealing with the Magna Zone? And uh, Togekiss, not the Pokemon that you really want to be seeing in this situation. Uh, previous formats, it has been able to uh, carry on launching off air slashes uh, to do lots of damage but of course uh, to, to try and flinch his opponents but of course the Dragapult coming out here for uh, Miguel's side of the field is going to be stopping the Gengar really doing anything. Uh, Dragon Darts is uh, both hits would automatically launch into the uh, Gengar if the Togekiss doesn't do anything. Um, and of course, there's always Phantom Force to be worrying about that we saw in the end of last game. Well, Alexander definitely needs to be worried because that Dragapult did go for the Phantom Force, and that would be able to KO the Gengar if the Tokus doesn't redirect on the next turn. But Gengar is able to fire off a Shadow Ball, doing a very respectable amount of damage to the Magna Zone, doing just about half damage, and it did pick up a special defense drop as well. So this Dazzling Gleam could be doing a bit more damage to the Magna Zone, but still not enough to pick up the KO. And the Magna Zone is able to respond with a Thunderbolt into the Gengar, which is able to pick up the KO on that Gengar. It is going to respond with a Cursed Body, so the Thunderbolt won't be able to be uh, launched into the Tokus anymore. But Flash Cannon should just be about be able to do the job. I think it certainly will be. But the uh, question is, is whether there's a Babiri Berry held on that Togekiss or not. And of course, we didn't see the Magnezone get critical hit by that Dazzling Gleam. And uh, with a special defense drop uh, and a critical hit, we may be able to see the Dazzling Gleam just do enough to pick up the knockout. We'll have to see as Phantom Force knocks the Togekiss down to just below half health. HP so, uh, and the Dazzling Gleam comes out. And it needed to pick up the knockout on this Dragapult here to be able to survive another Phantom Force, but doesn't even pick up the knockout on that Magna Zone, even with that critical hit. And it is able to fire off that Flash Cannon and pick up the knockout on the Tokus. And now Spain are going 3-0 into, into this stream. Yeah, what a way to build momentum. Uh, three games in a row, they have been able to prevail against Sweden. Uh, great games to both players there. Alexander had a, a really interesting team. I really enjoyed seeing how he played it. Really enjoyed that dynamic with the Perish Song as well, using some more unconventional Pokemon. And Gengar uh, used to be a Pokemon back in previous formats that used Perish Song to great effect with its Mega Evolution um, and Shadow Tag ability, but has kind of fallen off the radar a little bit with that, uh, that option not being available to it anymore. So uh, really, really enjoyed reliving that moment. Yeah, the problem with the, with the trapping that you have access to with the Gengar, you would have to go for the, the G-Max Terror, but then you can't click mm. that Perish Song option. Uh, so uh, definitely has fallen out of favor a bit, but it's very nice to see Alexander bringing it to this match. A shame not to see the, the Mama Swine come out, unfortunately. It yeah. uh, would have yeah. been something that could have definitely dealt with that Magna Zone that was a huge problem in that game three. Mm. Oh, could have been quite good uh, going into its Dynamax form as well, being able to max Quake on uh, to avoid 